tuloy na tuloy na yung debut ni Roman as a solo artist. The only one who still hasn't accepted this fact is Luke. So, um, nagliwaliw siya just to um, let off some steam. Then, he sees Roman's um, TV commercial high up on, on, on this, um, this huge screen and then that Obviously, it pissed him off even more. All of a sudden, the the newspaper club came in and tried to recruit Luke for their rush tool format. Of course, the newspaper club is held is uh, is headed by Bahro. Eh, umayo na si ano eh? Umayo na si Luke, even to the point of using his poly effect to disable their to disable their devices. Pero by accident, na activate yung dual guitar ni Romin. Finally, he accepts the challenge ni Bahro. Sa labas sila. Eventually, nilampaso niya si Bahro. Siguro a few on um, several several minutes later, Luke barges into Roman's debut concert along with with the with the entire newspaper club and the yung mga duelist na nabiktima ni Go Hayuga. Obviously, they all have their memories restored. And, well, obviously also, we know who challenged them to this kind of a duel. Si Luke. Right there and then, natanda na ni Romin yung... Ano? Yung, yung samahan nila bilang Team Sevens. And she's... And she really said... And right there, she apologized to everybody. Especially sila. Luke, si Roa, Yuga, at si Gakoto. But... Not everybody was happy. Her, her, um, her producer, si Princess G, took offense to this. Hinamon si Romin sa isang rush duel. Walang kabog-kabog, hinamon niya si Romin. Right on that stage. Final scene. What? It's a really strange final scene kasi we just saw Goha Yuga flying aimlessly at mukhang Bukang tuliro. This is not the Goha Yuga we are, we are, we were all used to. Yung itsura niya. I find it weird. Alright? Uh, mga ka lifestyle. I really find it weird. Despite that weirdness, we're gonna break that episode down right now. Critic sub style. Pace! I don't know ha, pero yung, yung tense pacing ng dual scene, na carry over na to the rest of the episode. Kasi, Luke had so much energy coming into this duel. Eh, ikaw niya, siguro, siguro ikaw niya. Well, I've restored, I've restored the newspaper club's memories. I might as well, I might as well go at it. I might as well go with, um, Yoshiro, with, uh, with Nick, and, uh, yeah, even the foodie duelist. Okay, sige, hamunin na natin. Ako yung ganado. <laughs> so, so that, so the the fast pacing of the episode, malalam tama nyo talaga. Eh. Na confirm ito when ayun nga when when Luke barged into into Roman's debut concert with all of these duelists uh, with their with their memories fully restored. So do I have complaints? Absolutely not. And considering na matatapos na ang sevens, so medyo Forgivable naman yung pag-express sila na storya. I'm telling you right now, mga lifestyle, Luke is the biggest hero of this episode. Because of him, Team Sevens is now complete. Flow naman. Medyo magkakadikit ang mga, ang tatlo eh. Tatlo, tatlo nakita kong gearship dito. Medyo magkakadikit sila eh. The first one was, was when Luke accepted Bakuro's challenge. The biggest thing this gearship will tell you is this. Luke's win streak is still intact. And considering na meron pa siya mga tinalong ibang duelist after this, lalong humaba ang win streak ng Mokong. <laughs> if this doesn't convince you that Luke is the only undefeated character here in Sevens, I don't know what will. Second gear ship was when, ayun nga, Luke and company they um 
they suddenly barge into uh, Roman's debut concert to to, uh, to at least jog her memories. Pero why did I call it Gearship? Kasi, obviously mga ka-lifestyle, kung hindi ginawa ni Luke ito, Roman might have gone on to um, to to completely forget about Rush Duels. Pero, inamin naman ni Roman dito that she became selfish right after um right after uh, the incident and completely turned her back on Rush Duels when when Rush Duels needed her. If I didn't call this a gear shift, consider me a normie, mga lifestyle. Final gear shift was, yun na, Princess G challenges Roman to a duel. Why did I call this a gear shift? Well, napaisip ako eh. Bakit hakamuni ni Princess G si Roman at such a time? Ako, nanghihinala ako, mga kalaysan, na, well, baka kasakot siya ni Goha Yuga or na duel in sex club. Huwag sana. Right? Huwag sana. These three gear shifts that I saw, one, two, all of them will play a role down the line uh, in the remainder, in the remainder of Seven's run. Especially, the last one. Plot lies. Hmm. So, Luke's, Luke was doing his thing. The Goa sibling, um, you, you and the other Goa siblings were doing their thing. Roman is doing her thing. Pero hindi nakakalito, guys. So that means, planchado ang plot. Di ko masasabi malinis kasi it doesn't follow um, it doesn't follow a, a single continuity. It follows multiple continuities happening at the same time. Pero uh, Bridge uh, showed it in such a way na hindi makoconfuse ang audience. Ito na nito, yan. Na-concentrate sa sa pag uh, sa pag albruto sa pag albruto ni Luke. Then uh, after after beating Bakuro in a duel, ito na, bigla, bigla. We're Goa HQ. We're seeing uh, the five Goa siblings. Yeah, the five siblings. Uh, figuring out where where each copy, where each surviving copy of the book is. So, yun. Uh, Sabi na. O, sige. So, nag-volunteer na si Eugene. O, sige. Ako na nabahala dyan. Ako mag-gather niyan. Basta isend nyo sa... Basta bigyan nyo, basta send nyo ako ng kopya. So, you know, and while this was happening, Roman's concert. Then, Luke barges in. Pero, maintindihan mo na ano eh, uh, Luke barging into Roman's concert happened, um, happened several minutes after he, um, after he beat all these duelists to, um, to restore their memories para matulungan siya na i-jog naman ang memory si Romin. So, oh, you, you, you get the whole idea. Right? The plot is well ironed out. Kaya, kagad magigets mo eh. Kung ano yung, kung ano yung, kung ano yung nangyari behind the scenes. Uh, basta ganun. <laughs> you got a well ironed out plot in this episode. So, pace, flow, and plot. They all came together for this episode, mga ka-lifestyle. So, Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's episode 86 deserve two thumbs up! Enough of Luke's win streak, alright? Talagang, kinonfirm na ng gearship na yun na Luke is, the mo Luke is right now the only character in 7's that is undefeated. And he's not the main pro tag. <laughs> so, ano na ang magiging complexion ng duel nila Princess G at ni Romin? Now, well, it's obvious. Romin's memories has been have been restored without without going through a duel. Bagat talagang ginag 
nila Luke and company ang memories ni Romin. O ito kami. You still remember us? You still remember Ross Duels? Ganun ang dating yan eh. When I, when I was watching the episode. So, talaga hindi ko maani sa isip ko eh. Bakit? From out of the blue, hakamunin ni Princess GC Robin sa isang duel. Just because na she's invested money on, of course, eh, siyang, executive producer, siyang executive producer ni Robin. So for her first album, syempre maglalabas, magsishell out ng pera yon For for uh, recording expenses, for uh, for hiring musicians. Eh, just because of that, hakamunin mo sa duelo si Romin. There's an underlying reason to that, mga ka-lifestyle. I can feel it in my bones. So, kailangan natin panoorin ang susur na episode. Kono talaga ang dahilan ni Princess G kung ba't niya hinamon si Romin sa isang duel. We really need to know. So again, Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's episode 86. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's mga galing naman ni Luke. Ang galing ni Luke. Preserve Bowen. Preserve Bowen. Slip niya. So, Patreon, wait for my next upload. And for those of you who are still stuck with the CHD, chill lang. Enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Two-part story to, mga ka-lifestyle. Okay? Okay? Inassign sila ng, uh, ng kanilang police captain to stake out a, um, a known drug dealer. Okay, Kenji ang pangalan. Yung team that com- composes of Yamada in Minamoto and um, Kawayan Fuji na ginabibilangan nila, uh, they were assigned to possess couples. Okay, la- yeah. not, just, uh, not just the four, but the entire team. So para ma... Mamanman nila kung saan pumunta to si Kenji at kung saan siya pwedeng hulihin. They were following Kenji and his um, living partner sa isang mall. Ang tumitil, yung apat. Yung apat na bida. While they were tailing this criminal, si Minamoto, may napansin kay kay Kawai. Si Yamada naman, may napansin uli kay Fuji. Minamoto now sees Kawai as a um, as a rookie monster. Ba- Bakula na tingin niya nito because nung sinabi niya na Kawai, uh, holding hands holding hands tayo. Kumari. At kumari ko po tayo bakit ba, para hindi tayo makalata niya. Well, he's got a point. Kasi they are, undoco- they are undercover. Hindi po mayag si Kawai because to her that sexual harassment. <laughs> In one moment, they, they found the time to, to, to hold a conference. Silang apat lang. It came to such a point that Fuji decided that she's the, um, that she's the one holding back the entire team. So, tinawag niya si Kawai. Oh, Kawai, magano na tayo. Tayo na lang mag-stake mag, mag sa punyetang drug dealer na yan. Eh, pumayo na si Kawai. Pero, Minamoto stopped them. O oh, sige, sige, sige. We'll um, consider namin yung standards niyo. So off they went as as per as per the assignment. Ngayon pumasok sa isang motel. Well, in Japan they call it love hotels. Okay, pero dito motel. Pumasok sa isang motel si Kenji at yung at yung living partner niya. So abay, alam mo dili na sundan yon. So sinundan sinus, sinundan nila pareho both both pairs. So they nakarkala sila ng tig isang kwarto. In such a way na maririnig nila kung ano ang ginagawa ng ng mag-partner doon sa loob ng kwarto nila. Sa side nila nila Fuji at Yamada dinig na dinig. Pero sa side naman nila Minamoto at Kawai hindi. So eh, sinabi nila ni Minamoto through cellphone na, Nako, uh, we're, we're counting on you. We're counting on you, ah. Seiko-chan, na alertuin kami once the, 
Kung sa may, sa may mangyari rito. Alright? Sobrang taga na lang paghihintay nila Minamoto at Kawai. All of a sudden, the lieutenant, the lieutenant called, called him by phone. Sinabi na, o oh, Minamoto, Kawai, labas na kayo dyan. Tapos na. Nahuli na yung isospek. Sila, uh, Yamada and Fuji found a way to own. Just to, just to tell them to come, uh, just to tell them to come with us. <laughs> so, in the rivalry between Fuji and Minamoto, this doesn't work well for Minamoto. Bakit? Kasi, not only his, his standing against Fuji is on the line, but also his job. <laughs> then, a call from the captain came <laughs> to Minamoto. Eh, bigla na na, sinabi na lang ni ni ni, Yam, ni Yamada it's been a pleasure working with you sir <laughs> nagpapaalam na baka nga naman si Sandin eh hindi nila hindi nila mapakanta si Kenji yung nahuling yung nahuling drug dealer kahit yung kahit yung living partner hindi rin nagsasalita so They brought in Minamoto and Kawai to to talk to talk to the lead to talk to the to the living partner. Ay tataka si Kawai kung bakit um ang mga tinatawa ni Minamoto eh nito. Eh kumusta naman yung kumusta naman yung uh, yung anak niyo sa school? Eh is he, is he doing well? Nagtataka to lang ngayon si Kawai kung bakit ganun ang line of questioning ni Minamoto but they have until um, they got 7 days actually to um, to get the living partner's confession either either one of them now on March 8 the final day of of cops um, of cops holding these two what? sinabi na lang ni Minamoto na Just promise me one thing, ma'am. Be a good, um, uh, be good to be good to both your mother and son after this. So, tumayo. Then, bigyan na ng sinabi ng babae na there's a man named Busque who's handling all her um, all her partner's deals. Please bring him in. Ooh. Finally, kumanta! <laughs> Minamoto's tactics worked. Final scene. Nung gabing, well, nung gabing pauwi na silang lahat, Kawai apologized to, um, to Minamoto for stepping out of line kasi meron siyang, binigla niya kasi ng tanong sa living partner na, uh, what do you know about this case? Eh, syempre, pipigil na siya ni Minamoto. Minamoto's the head detective here. The head interrogate. Head interrogator. Eh, sinabi na lang ni, ni Minamoto, it's okay. Pero, um, proverbially, he said, not, um, not every criminal, not, no, not every criminal is evil at heart. We're gonna break this episode down now, critics of style. Total, two-part story ito. Pace. There wasn't any tense pacing actually. Pero, um, slow but excruciatingly funny. <laughs> Nakakatawan dating. Right? At lalong lalo na yung uh, the way Minamoto now sees Kawai because of this episode. Do I have complaints? Absolutely na mga ka lifestyle. I absolutely love the pacing, the overall pacing of this episode, knowing it's a two-part story. So, aya, hindi magkaiba ang pacing eh. Talagang slow and funny ang pacing. Right? And of course, in the end, we we get to learn a life lesson. Aya, no complaints pagdating sa pacing. Plot wise, plot wise, flow naman. Sorry. First gear shift was when Kenji decided to want to take his 
take his living partner to a motel and we maybe yeah, and get uh, get busy over there. The gearship that set off uh, a chain of events that led to his arrest and the eventual um uh the eventual career check right the eventual career assessment Minamoto did on himself <laughs> Tandaan nyo, in the last episode yup their captains their um their lieutenant said that all of them are fired Mabuti naman bilikan sila ng consideration dito So wow uh, they should not screw this up uh, It's the gears that would make you think you should not screw this up guys Kundi talaga masisisad ni kayo so, final gear ship was when Kawai suddenly popped the question to, uh, to the living partner na, ano ba nalaman niyo sa asong to? And, Minamoto stopped her right there. No brainer of a gear ship, folks. Just goes to show you that, um, that, well, Minamoto, despite the goofy, the goofy cop that he is, He's still um, the station's best interrogator. Talagang magaling siya mag-line up questioning. And he told Kawai right there and then that he had no intent to to ask the lady about the case. Pero, wow, right? This gearship will also show how a takeaway close is done. I used to be a salesman, kaya I know what the takeaway close is, and how, uh, how, how it should be, how it should be done properly to get the best results. This gear shit will show you how. So these two, dalawang palayon. So these two gear shifts that I saw, um, the the last one may not, uh may not have uh, may not play a role in the next few episodes but certainly here well we learned a big lesson here all of us uh, all of us who were able to see this episode plot lies hmm wala eh talagang iisang continuity lang ang nakita ko rito mga kalaistad so malinis ang plot did I say more? So, pace, flow, and plot. They all, they all came together for this episode, folks. So, Police in a Pod, episode 7. Two thumbs up. I'll fill you in on something. We are now at the halfway, the midway point of this episode's run. Kasi episode 7. Police in a Pod is a 13 episode run. So, kung ikukumpara nyo ito sa The Vampire Dice in no time, midway point eh, mukhang magkakaroon na lang uh, come the second half of that anime's run, yung Vampire, meron ng, ano eh, nagkaroon ng konting linaw na a definite story na kumbaga a storyline that spans at least three episodes nagkaroon ng ganon ang anime nyo and more likely this one will have uh, I can feel it in my bones that this one will have the same uh, uh, length of a story so tuto pa more tayo gusto ko yun ang anime na to galing eh alright so again Police in a Pod episode 7 Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for this anime, mga kalaista. Galing talaga ng man house. And wow, may life, may life lesson pa. Hmm, take away clothes. Uy, seal stock. So Patreon, wait for my next upload. And for those of you who are still stuck with the CHD, relax, relax lang. Enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Ito po ang tunay na review for episode 6, alright? Not the previous one. That was for episode 5, folks. We're on the cruise. Well, 
Nagparamdam na si Rihanna. <laughs> In his usual um his usual uh his usual stalker ways. Pero uh something positive came out of it. He sort of um taught Shato how to how to dress for the occasion. Pinadala niya ng isang um uh, isang gown store doon mismo sa cruise ship. Sa laki ng cruise ship na ito, akala mo mall na. Aka, well, it has its own shopping center. Ganito kalaki ito. May napiling gown si Shato na isusot for gala night. Eh, medyo mahaba yung laylayan. So, sabi ni Rianga, tinawag niya yung sales ni. Pakigawa nga ng paraan to. So, yun. Eh, they were able to they were able to hem it up. So, while they were walking back to their room, tumawag si Brian. And, basically, um, sinabi, sinabi niya kay Shato na na meron pang dalawang meron pang dalawang security na na darating for his wife. Yung asawa niya mismo ang kliyente nila. Si, um, si Hawk. Okay? Si Hawk Richland. Anak mayaman. Tens of billions ang net worth. Naka-jackpot si Brian pala rito. But anyway, kaya pala niya tinawagan si Shato, he wants to talk to Riang Ha. So, binigay ni Shato yung phone. Ayun. Nagkausap sila ni Riang Ha. And, when he, when he mentioned the name Shato Noble to Riang Ha, biglang, lumaki ang mata ni Riang Ha. And, well, sinabi na lang ni Brian na, maybe we can meet, maybe we can, um, we can uh, we can talk we can talk this over. Eh what? Natural pumayag si Riang ha. Pero on on the night of their meet up, all of a sudden may lumapit kay Brian, may panaksak. Yung paglingon niya ganun. Um that sequence stopped. It instantly pan over to um to where uh, to where the others are. Sila Jim yung wife niya and of course si Jim tinatawagan si tinatawagan si Shato final scene pagkabanggit ni Jim na that uh, that their boss si Brian has um has gone radio silent biglang excuse me natanda ni Shato yung conversation nila nila Brian at Riangha over the phone ayun pinakita may nakapasat na balisong dito sa liig ni Brian. Brian is dead. So let's break this episode down now, critics of style. Pace! Like I said a while ago, for, uh, the pacing was slice of life-like for the first um, for the first two-thirds of the episode. Then, Nung in-open up ni Brian, then yung name na Shato Noble kay Rian, ha? I felt, okay, things are gonna get serious from now on. Yun ang naramdaman ko sa pacing. And, well, it actually did. It culminated in the final scene. Culminated in sequences before the final scene, yung sasaksakin na ng, ng, asailan, ni Bri- asailan, ng asailan si Brian. Obviously, it's not Rian, ha? The pacing went from slice of life to suspense in um uh, in the last third of the episode. So wow. And I was beginning to enjoy the slice of life moments here with, between um <laughs> between Rianha and Shato. So, do I have complaints when uh, about the pacing of this episode? No? Sakto lang. Flow naman. The well, first gear shift here was when mm, Rihanna and Shato finally met up at the at the cruise ship. Well, no brainer of a gear shift, folks. It triggered the episode. Second gear shift was when Brian um, opened the subject of Shato Noble to Rihanna. Well, another no brainer of a gear shift, folks. Dahil but this sets off the chain of events that would carry over probably um 
Probably in the second half In the second half of this anime's run Tandaan nyo Episode 6 na Episode 6 na to So na- nakalakati na tayo for The first half of this anime's run Final gear shift Was of course the final scene It confirms the second gear shift Um Pero You can't erase the fact that Well Iisip mo bilang film Naku po Sigurado ang unang, bi- ang unang pagbibindangan ni Shato dito si Rianga. Kasi, Rianga is scheduled to to meet up with Brian that night. Kasi, mag- kasi magkikwentuhan sila regarding well, regarding Shato's past. And, it looks like Rianga has uh, an inkling of what Shato's past look like. Kaya, siguro may suspicion nga si Brian Uh, when it comes to that aspect Gulo Ang Ang ibubungo ng gear shift na to That's why I call it a gear shift So these three gear shifts that I saw folks The last two If either the last two don't play a role In the next episode More likely For the entire second half Of this anime's run We can go back to this episode, particularly these, particularly these two gear shifts. Plotwise. Hmm. Wala akong makita ng side story dito. Back story, wala talaga. So, malinis ang plot, folks. Tuloy-tuloy eh. Because we were only following one continuity here. Yung nga yung sa cruise ship. Lalo yung, yung mga yung mga romantic moments nila Ryang Hot Shato, especially nung uh, they were shopping for Shato's gown na isusot on uh, that night sa gala. So Wow. Right? For for a crime thriller, this one had a really clean plot. This particular episode lang ha. You had a really clean plot. Shut up na ako. <laughs> so, pace, flow, and plot. They all came together for this episode, folks. So, Love of Kill, episode 6. The real one. Mm. Two thumbs up. Bakit? The last two gear shifts are extremely crucial ones. Kasi, well, A murder just took place. All right? The triggering events are in the second gear ship. Syempre, ang una pagsususpechahan diyan si Riang ha. Because Shadow was there when Brian um when Brian talked to Riang ha over the phone saying na gusto niya makipagkita dito. And wow, right? I don't envy Rihanna's position right now with Shato. So, unti-unti na nga lumalagay na ang loob ni, ni Shato sa kanya. Eh. And this happens. Someone wants to frame him. Yeah, someone someone wants both him and Shato dead actually. And siguro, step one lang ito sa kanya. So, Whew. It's going to be a rough road ahead for Riang Ha. Trying to convince, uh, trying to try to convince the girl he's in love with. Na hindi siya mga wani to. Unang una, balis ang ang pinapatay ki Brian eh. Sinaksak sinaksak dito sa leeg. That's not his mo, right? Riang Ha is too classy of an assassin to do this. No, nope. considering what well, what we what we have seen, uh, what we have seen from him since the since the pilot. If he does, um, if he does use a knife, it's on a whim. Pero most of the time, he's got a gun. He's got a gun up top somewhere in his body. So, <laughs> again, mga kalaisad, I do not envy Riang Ha's position right now. All right. What will happen now to 
or with his relationship with si Shato. Eh, unti-unti nang bumibigay na si Shato sa kanya. He's that close na na maging sila. Tapos eto pa. The enemy is going to do um, uh, is going to do everything it can to to destroy these two, especially si Riyangha. Because of his um his um him being the main reason why the Kitekai? Kitekai ba yon? The Kitekai is is now is now gone as an or, as a criminal organization. He was the main reason behind it. So Wow. I can't wait for the next episode. Yun lang. <laughs> So again, Love of Kill episode 6. Again, yung tunay na review for episode 6 ha. Mm. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for Love of Kill mga kalaista. Wow. Talaga. Kawawang riyang. Mapagbibinta ka rito sigurado. So Patreon, wait for my next upload. And for those of you who are still stuck with the CHD, chill chill lang muna. In the meantime, Enjoy the other reviews in this digest. We pick up where we left off. May tumumbaki Goku and Sanzo has a pretty good idea who si Ukoku. So, imbis na um at atinan muna si si Goku He he runs off to to chase after to chase after the assailant, leaving Hakai. Eh, Hakai and Gojo happen to um uh what you call this? Happen to pass by. Oh, yung nakita nila. Tinulungan tinutulungan nila si Goku. Then they could not stop the bleeding. Talagang kahit ano healing magic ang ang gamitin ni Hakai kay Goku, wala eh. Tuloy-tuloy pa rin yung dali ng dugo. Dami. There's only one thing left to do para ma-save si Goku. Remove his crown. And well, we all know what happens when when someone, when uh, when Goku's crown is removed. Yung coronet. Coronet yan ang tawag dun eh. Yung kanyang pagiging Diyos, lumalabas. And Well, basically, lumalabas yung pagiging monkey king niya. Ayun, nung tinanggal, he starts wreaking havoc, pero fully healed, parang walang nangyari. And, he's stronger now. In as much as tumulong na rin sila, he's a lot got para tigilan siya. In as much as Hakai removed his own limiters dito, yung tatlong, tatlong hikaw niya rito. Kasi pag tinanggal niya yun, Ganon din, lalabas din, lalabas din yung full demon powers niya. So, umabot sa ganon. What this was going on, okay, Sanzo was of course busy chasing after the, um, um, uh, after that asilan. What, what, a backstory is now running through his head on how he met Okoku. And, the incident that, yeah, that made him embrace the fact that he is a Sanzo. Final scene. Um, he decides to go back to to where to where he left Goku kasi naramdaman niya na parang nako, mukhang mukhang pinakawalan yung power ni Goku ah. So, ta- so tapos na pabalik. But, he just um, he just found Gojo picking up both Hakai and Goku and all Gojo said to um, to Sanzo was I'm busy right now I can't punch you in the face right now for your benefit we're gonna break this episode down now pretty sound style Pace alam nyo kahit nagkaroon ng backstory sequence hindi nawala yung tense pacing eh. because The action was so intense mula nung uh, yeah, opening scene yung where, where we, we picked up where we left out nung, nung tilong pa si Goku. It was tense all throughout eh. 
And well, the backstory sequence didn't do didn't, didn't do anything much to appease it. What am I complaining? No! <laughs> Hell no! Well, it was a really tense pacing, but I'm totally satisfied, right? Because the act because it fueled the action sequences here. Flow naman! First gear shift here was when Hakai and Gojo decided to take off to take off Goku's coronet just to save his life. Well, it's a no-brainer of a gear shift, folks. It triggered the episode. Second gear shift was when um, Sanzo's backstory started. And why did they call us a gear shift? Despite what's going on, the episode filled us in on how on how Sanzo developed this kind of a mindset. Because, oh, by the looks of it, that it's a backstory sequence. Na yun, um, history just repeated itself. Final gear shift was when ayun nga, the final scene. It's the gear shift that will tell you that, um, yep, um, trust and confident, confidence issues are, are resurfacing again. Kumbaga, sakit na na sa Yuki ito. But, it, it's the gear shift that will tell you that, oh, okay. But, anyway, trust and confidence issues are a trademark of Sayuki. If you're, uh, if you're new to this anime franchise, you probably might not feel sorry. Pero, siguro, ah, dala na rin, dala na rin ang pagkabingkator niya. Yung, yung, uh, hindi niya pagkakatulong sa pagpigil kay Goku. So, these three gear shifts that I saw, the last one, I'm very sure we'll play a role down the line in this uh, uh, in Zero Win. Tandaan nyo mga ka-lifestyle. We're now at the halfway point of this re of this uh, of this series' run. 13 episodes of Zero Win. Nakakalimutan nyo. So, episode 7 is the halfway point. Next week will be the second half of the run now. And, well, I think we're, I think this early where we should expect a um, a good finale again from this uh, from Sayuki. Plot wise, you can't say it's a clean plot, but a well ironed out one. Planchado. Yeah. Um. The only complaint I have with the um, with the backstory scene was is, sana inikyan nila ng kahit konte. It's okay because this backstory sequence uh, tells us as to how Sanzo developed this kind of mindset. Na dapat uh, dapat hunting kagad yung tumumba para malaman kung well, so we can get some information, and if he, if, he doesn't, if he doesn't talk, I can just shoot him in the head. Vengeance is complete. So, um, it's a decently ironed out plot, to tell you frankly. It's a decently ironed out plot, because I've seen these kinds of episodes before, pero hindi. Um, this episode's plot is not enough to disappoint me because, well, the action sequences make up or make up for it. And Gojo, Hakai, Hazel, and Gat, they they were they were trying their very best to um, just to simply restrain Goku, put to try to put that crown back on his head. So, and that was what happened to Sanzo dun. Eh, According to the legend of Sayuki, the actual legend, uh, Sanzo is the is the guardian of Goku here on Earth. Siya ang inasign ni Buddha. 
na magbuntay sa Monkey King uh, on, the, on this journey. So, attend to his needs and of course, um, be familiar with his weaknesses. So, uh, it's a good thing I know about, uh, I know a thing or two about Oriental mythology. Kaya alam na alam kong sayo. Alam na alam kong takbo ng anime na to. But, of course, may variations from the different studios, especially this one. It's done by Lightning Films, okay? The same guys behind Tokyo Revengers and uh, Build Divide Code Black. Yeah. And of course, Killing Bites. Oh, personal favorite. <laughs> so, it's a decently iron out plot, but not bad enough to disappoint me. So, pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode. For this episode. Pwek! This episode, folks. So, Sayugi Reload Zero In, Episode 7. I'm gonna deny that. Bakit? Well, like I said, um, a while ago, they should have shortened the backstory sequence a little bit more. Kasi, as, as it is, if someone new to anime watched this episode, baka mawalan siya ng gana. All because of the backstory sequence. Eh, eh nagkakalabo-labo lang yung mga beat eh. Because they're, they're trying so hard to to suppress Goku. Eh, once you take that crown of his, he becomes a god. He's virtually unstoppable. Right? Only Buddha can, only Buddha himself can take him down. So, kung iniklian lang nila ng konti ang backstory, tuloy-tuloy pa rin sana yung ano eh, yung, baka lalo naging tense yung pacing. Yan. Pero dito, naging consistent yung tense pacing the moment the backstory sequence started um, started playing. Medyo, ano nga ako eh, medyo, ha? Huh? We're in the middle of a fight. Parang, oh sige, magbibigyan ko to. Parang gumagano na ako eh. Gumagano na ako in the, min- in the middle of the episode when I was watching it. So, I gotta, I gotta be objective, so you, my fellow Sayuki fans. Yun lang ang may ko. So again, Sayuki Reload Zero in Episode 7. Hindi ko pa makalungutan. Hmm. Yan. I'm sorry, maya. Ito lang. Lagi ito lang. So Patreon, wait for my next upload. Especially with regards to this anime. To all, to, all, to all of you who are still stuck with the CHD, I strongly suggest you follow what uh, what the finger is uh, to, where this, to where that finger is pointing. Alright? But in the meantime, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. Shift na naman story ah, kay Shota. It's starting to be um a bit scary for him. A bit uh, well, if Kyoji finds it boring already, he well, Shota finds it scary. Remember, guys, Shota is only 18, and for and for him to be to be exposed to this kind of sexual exploitation, yeah, it's quite a shocker. Okay. Masasak siya talaga. Ito lang, ano, yung unang babae na inassign sa kanya, si Yanagi, eh, ay naghintayin pa ng, ng gabi. Pinuntaan siya sa men's room, and, well, let's just say she forced herself on him. Pero nakapigla si, nakapigla si Shota. In the, um, the faculty room, where he usually hides from his bullies, 
That was five years ago. May dumating na isa pa. Um, who was in the same boat five years ago, pero in another school. Pinakita niya by disrobing, ayun, may mga pasapasa. Proof that she was bullied at the time. Eh, well, ni-request na lang niya kay Shota na, could you, um, could you show me yours? So, what she meant by that is yung, yung mga bugbog ni Shota sa, sa pambubuli sa kanya. Well, Shota, Shota obliged, mm, pinakita, dami, dami pa sa, halatang, halatang binuli siya ng bonggang bongga at that time, five years ago. Then, nothing led to another, yep, They fuck. <laughs> Then later on in the episode, uh, binalita sa kanya ni Karen that uh, sino ba to? Si, si Yuzu, si Miss Yuzu ay nagpa-transfer na ng nagpa-transfer na ng school. So, she'll be there for a year or two. This pissed Shota off really good. He even threatened Karen na ibalik mo si Yuzo. Eh, well, wala na rin siya magagawa. Kasi, andyan eh. Final scene. Um, Karen introduced a, a new a new classmate of theirs. Transfer student. Her name is, um, ano ba yun? Si, ah, I forgot. Basta, the look on Shota's face, eh, hindi ko maipinta yung itsura ni Shota when she when he saw this girl. Mukhang kilala niya. Mukhang kilalang kilala ni Shota, ni Shota ito. So, alright. <laughs> We're gonna break that down now. Critics of style. Pace! Well, kumbaga daily lives of Shota style na pacing eh. Medyo binilisan nila during the second fourth of the episode kasi um uh, halos araw-araw binago na kasi yung scheduling ng mga girls sa kanya imbis na once one girl per week one girl a day so pinakita kong ano yung ano yung naging ad- adventures niya bawat day <laughs> so well totally understandable because um well, at least for me mga ka lifestyle the pacing made me realize how scary a lifestyle shota has now the pacing will absolutely make you feel um shota's plight so do I have complaints about the pacing of the episode no The pacing is actually typical of a borderline hentai. So, medyo, yeah, medyo expected ko ang ganitong klaseng pacing sa ganitong klaseng anime. Flow naman! Um, I only saw two gear shifts here. The first one was during, was during that scene where uh, Yanagi harassed Shota in the men's room dahil gusto na niya makipag-sex sa kanya right there and then hindi na niya ayaw na niyang hintayin pang uh, maggabi why did they call it a gear shift? well you could see it right there in that scene na nagkaroon bigla ng recall si Shota sa mga bullying moments nila noon 5 years ago na dadalhin siya ng mga bully niya sa men's room dun bubugbugin dun dun duduran sa mukha Um, dun, um, dun sa i-verbal assault, talagang bullying in every sense of the word. So, uh, when that moment came, talagang nag-flashback sa kanyang lahat yun. And, well, should, you, should we say na na-trauma si, si, si Shota in this gear shift? Absolutely. Kasi, hindi niya maririkol lahat yung kung hindi siya natotroma sa, nangya- sa, sa iksenang yun. Will it affect his sex drive? Absolutely! Final gear shift was when he received the news from Karen that Yuzu has transferred. Wala na siya sa, wala na siya sa Kmount City. Hmm, kinabibilangan ng, 
ng, uh, ng tatlong males, including Rito. Why did I call it gear shit? Mom! Like I said a while ago, mga ka-lifestyle, this gear shift is shot as breaking point. Alatang alata sa mukha eh. Right? Talagang, na-feel ko na, yup, he's about to, um, shot as about to lose it. No matter how you look at it, it's a pivotal gear shift, folks. So these two gear shifts that I saw, both of them, will play a role down the line in the final four episodes of this anime. Tandaan nyo, road to the finale na po tayo. So it's the second half of this anime's run. It's also the road to the finale. Kasi 11 episodes lang ang World's End Harem eh. Plot-wise, hmm. Planchado, mga ka-lifestyle. Bakit? Because, I love the way the, I love the, I love the timing of the backstory sequences here. Talagang, habang, uh, habang hina, habang hinahara siya sexually ni, ni Yanagi, dun, dun lumalabas eh, yung mga backstory sequences. Ibig sabihin nun, uh, pumaplashback ngayon kay Shota, yung, yung pagbubulis sa kanya nung 5 years ago. Dito niya, kinokorelate ngayon sa sa sa, pang, sa pangharas na ito ni, ni Yanagi. To him, this is bullying already. So, wow. What a way to, um, what a way to clearly relate the present to the past. At least in Shota's way of thinking. Kaling. Kaya, God, it's a well ironed out plot. I gotta commend the um, Gukumi and Axis for that. Nothing more to say. <laughs> so, pace, flow, and plot, they all came together for this episode, folks. So, World's End Harem Episode 7. No, mag -isip. Mm. Two thumbs up. pag natin ngayon yung ano, yung. Uh, yung magiging repercussions ng ng final two scenes ng episode na to. And it, and it all concerns Shota. Una sa lahat. Okay? His, um, well, yan, yeah, nakakaintindi na sila ni Yuzo. His girlfriend has moved away from Kimon City. And she'll be there, and she'll be there for two years at the most. Kung sa man siya what? Natural. Mahuhulila yung mahuhulila yung bata. Okay. The kids going to miss him. The kids going to miss her. Eh, oh, sana first time ni Shota. And um when all of this happened, well, they got that hindi na, hindi na rin eh yung matatawa, okay? Bukas sila na nga eh. Okay? Because they they well, for in the previous um episodes talaga they've been together. So, pangalawa, sino itong bagong classmate nila Sota at Karen na mukhang kilalang kilala ni Sota? It's like someone someone from his past jumped out into the present. Sino kaya ito? Really wanna know. Talaga ako, nakyuros ako kasi the look on Sota's face talaga yung mukhang takot pa eh. You could see the fear in his face. Mukhang. Mukhang kilalang kilala niya ito. So, I can't wait for the next episode, folks. Because of that final scene. Alright? So, so mga kalayas na, tutok pa more tayo. Because, we're now down to just the final four episodes of Roads and Harem. Kaya, tutukan niyo na rin. So again, World's End Harem Episode 7. Two thumbs up. Another two thumbs up for World's End Harem, mga ka-lifestyle. Kawawa naman si Shota. Ibalik yun na si Yuzo. Come on. You, you gotta keep it sanity and not just to keep on going at this. So Patreon, wait for my next upload. 
And for those of you who are still stuck with the CHD, you know what to do when it comes to uh, when it comes to this when it comes to that finger pointing up. Yep, that same finger. Until then, enjoy the other reviews in this digest. <laughs>